When Mike opens his noisy garage doors, he's startled by an offensive odor. As soon as he steps inside, he's disgusted. Where did this odor originate? Mike's stomach stings horribly as he unexpectedly sees his neighbor's delivery. What was inside the package was the source of the scent. As a result, he thought his neighbor had subscribed to one of those subscription boxes that provided meat each month. The box contained no meat of any kind. This was indeed an unimaginable experience. Mike Jones was an ordinary man in an ordinary town. Throughout the community, many townspeople knew Mike as a friendly and caring neighbor who would be willing to help anybody out. But Mike had no idea what was coming to him when he agreed to help a new neighbor out. He thought it was a kind gesture, but he was so wrong. Mike had lived in the same house for the past 11 years, and with every new family that moved into the neighborhood, he welcomed them with a smile and a wave. So when his new neighbor asked Mike to pick up any mail or parcels he had delivered while he was away, Mike agreed as any friendly neighbor would. But Mike had no idea what he was about to uncover. Mike's new neighbor was younger than him. He was one of those YouTubers who seemed to enjoy filming wacky videos in hopes that he would go viral. One of those videos included finding an M&M in a pool of Skittles, which Mike just rolled his eyes at. At first, Mike didn't mind. He's just young though. But Mike had no idea the lens his neighbor would go to become famous. One Friday afternoon, Mike heard a knock at the door. He answered and was surprised to see it was his YouTube neighbor. It turned out that his neighbor was going away for a few weeks and he asked Mike to get his mail while he was gone. Mike was relieved to hear this. At least he'd be out of the way. But Mike had no idea what was coming his way. His neighbor set off the following day, and for the first few days, it was merely bills and letters that Mike had retrieved from his neighbor's house. Then one night, Mike came across a package at the front of his neighbor's house, written on it was, Return to Sender in Bright Red. Mike didn't know at that time, but this mysterious package was about to tear his world into two. The package was quite big, and with the struggle, Mike pushed the box over to his home to keep safe for his neighbor. He planned on putting it in his garage, but the parcel was heavy. Mike was a pretty big guy, no stranger to weight lifting at the gym, yet he struggled to move this box. What was inside? He thought maybe it was a furniture, but he was so wrong. It took around 15 minutes and Mike had finally managed to transport his neighbor's large box into his own garage. But as he opened the squeaky garage doors, suddenly he lost grip on the box and it fell to the ground. He heard a crack coming from inside the box and Mike stopped in his tracks. Whoops! He hoped it was nothing too expensive there, but Mike had no idea what he had just done. After pushing the box into the corner of the garage, Mike pulled down his squeaky garage doors and headed back inside his home. He had forgotten all about the box until a few days had passed. But suddenly, one day, he noticed something that made him sick to his stomach. A terrible smell that was lingering in the house. One morning while Mike was in his kitchen cooking breakfast, he noticed that something was off. There was a strange smell lingering around the room. As the day went by, he could smell it in every room of the house. At first, it was nothing more than a light odor. But then the smell transformed into something truly horrific. It was like roadkill. Mike searched all around his house, inspecting each and every corner and nook. However, he couldn't find the source, but then he realized that he hadn't checked his garage. He opened the squeaky garage doors and the repulsive smell knocked Mike back. He walked inside the garage, covering his nose. He had no idea what he was about to uncover. Mike scanned all around his garage to try and find the source of the smell. With each step, Mike felt the smell getting stronger and stronger. But then he realized something. The smell was coming from the box in the corner. Mike felt a terrible feeling hit the pit of his stomach as he looked at his neighbor's box. At first, Mike thought perhaps his neighbor had ordered one of those monthly meat subscription boxes. They were incredibly popular throughout the neighborhood. The reasonable thing to do was to put it into the fridge right away after delivery. But maybe his neighbor had forgotten to mention to Mike. But what was inside the box was not animal meat. It was something truly unimaginable. Mike covered his nose as he got closer to the box. He picked up a pair of scissors and bent down, but then he saw the box was soggy. Mike was repulsed at this. He cut through the top of the box, and just when he thought that the smell couldn't get any worse, he flipped open the flaps and discovered a new meaning to the word stink. Straight away, Mike opened the box. He was met with a smell that was so disgusting. It made Mike wretch. Quickly, he ran outside for some fresh air. What was inside the box that sunk so badly? 
He knew he had to find out, but he wasn't prepared for what he would find. No amount of freshener, sprays, or deodorants could make the smell go away. He knew he had to go back inside the garage and take a look inside the box. He took a deep breath before walking back into the garage, but now he had no idea what was about to find. Armed with the cloth covering his nose, a garbage bag in one hand, and cleaning bleach in the other, Mike made his way over to the box ready to get rid of whatever was inside. But as Mike was about to find out what he didn't need any of those things, what he was about to find inside the box was nothing that could be cleaned or washed away. It was something that would haunt Mike for years to come. Mike was correct when he guessed that the source of the smell had come from the rotting meat. The stench could only be coming from that sort of thing. Mike's mouth dropped wide open when he saw what his neighbor put inside the box. It was evidently dead but in one piece. He ran out of his garage and called out for help. Mike felt sick to his stomach. As quickly as a flash, the cops turned up but Mike wasn't prepared for what he would just find later out. As expected, the cops took Mike in for interrogation, seeing as he was the one with the corpse inside the garage. Thankfully, they realized that they had nothing to do with it and let him go. But there was something inside the box alongside his neighbor's corpse that was a crucial piece of evidence. It would change everything and ultimately prove Mike's innocence. The neighbor was holding a vlogging camera. The cops showed Mike the footage from the neighbor's camera. He had no idea what he was going to watch, but he knew he had to find out. Already emotional from uncovering a corpse inside his garage, what Mike saw on his neighbor's footage left him even more lost for words. You see, the footage showed Mike's neighbor sitting inside the box of the shipping facility. He spoke into the camera and told people he was going to mail himself across the country. He had no food, blankets, flashlights, or bottles. The plan was foolproof or that is what he thought. His neighbor thought that his prank was going to make him go viral. Soon enough, people worldwide would hear about the guy that mailed himself home. He would get through thousands of views on his channel and make a good profit out of an ad revenue. Maybe he would even get some interviews on mainstream media. And people did indeed end up hearing about him, but it was for a much harrowing and eerie reason. At one point, he told his viewers, in a truck, ready to be delivered. But in the last piece of footage in Mike's neighbor's harrowing video diary, he confidently told the camera he had a feeling he was near home. And suddenly the box toppled over and the shot went to black. His neighbor had broken his neck. After watching this footage, Mike felt sick to his stomach. While he thought his neighbor was stupid for attempting such a dangerous prank, he never could have expected that it would cost him his life. But there was something that Mike failed to mention to the police. It was a crucial detail that would have a major consequence. You see, in his neighbor's footage, just after the box toppled over and his neighbor broke his neck, Mike heard a noise that sounded incredibly familiar. When he realized what it was, he felt shivers go down his spine. It was a sound that he knew very well, the screeching sound of his own garage doors. Could it be that Mike was to blame for his neighbor's unfortunate incident? Instantly, Mike was hit by a violent wave of anguish and anxiety. Had he been responsible for his neighbor's death? What should he do now? What would the police say about it? But surely they had checked the footage as well. They knew that the cause of the accident was the box toppling over. However, there was no essential detail. Just by checking the footage, the police had no way of knowing whether the accident had taken place. For all they knew, the box could have fallen off the truck upon delivery or from one of the racks inside the truck. While reflecting this, Mike came to an appalling realization. The police had no way of knowing that the accident had occurred inside the garage. Therefore, they were in the dark about the fact that it was Mike who dropped the box causing his neighbor's death. Mike broke down in cold sweat. Now Mike was faced with a dilemma he could have never guessed he would have to encounter. Should he tell the police about what really happened? Should he tell him that the screech that he could hear on the footage was his garage door? In a few seconds, Mike saw his whole fly flashing before his eye as his heart galloped inside his chest, threatening to jump out of his mouth. He had visions of himself in front of a court with handcuffs and an orange overall before being sentenced, then spending the rest of his life in prison or getting out as an old man. Why couldn't his neighbor have started a channel of fragrance reviews or video games? Why did he have to set himself up for risky pranks and get Mike involved without telling him anything about it? Mike, frightened, devastated, furious and regretful, all rolled into one. He felt like crying, screaming and yelling all types of insults and curses dedicated to his neighbor. But what should Mike do now? Should he tell the police the truth and risk going to jail? Or should he just pretend that he heard that screech play dumb and not mention about it at all? 
Would he be able to live all his life with this uncertainty that his neighbor died inside his garage and that he was responsible for it? One police officer stopped the video right there and then, then all that the officers in the room turned black looked at Mike for a few seconds. All the eyes were on him. He could feel a big drop of sweat going down his forehead and flooding the palms of his hands. After a few seconds, that felt like an eternity when the officer spoke. I'm sorry for this, the officer said. I can see that you're in distress. The footage is certainly quite disturbing and I'm sorry that you had to watch it, but it's necessary. Now with your permission and my fellow officers, I'm going to have to ask you a few questions about what we've just seen and playing on the screen. I would like to ask you if the box fell down inside your garage or after you picked it up, giving Mike an ice-cold stare that looked like it could perforate into his mind and his very soul. A few seconds of silence followed. Mike's heart was beating like a drum. Now it was the moment of truth. Now Mike had to make the decision. He could tell the officers the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth and face whatever consequences that followed from it. Or he could just admit that one single detail that made him have a part. No matter how accidental or unwilling, in someone else's death and carry on with life like nothing ever happened. But before he could speak, he noticed that words couldn't come out of his mouth. He noticed something. It was something that had never happened to him in many years. Tears began flowing down his face and he broke down. He couldn't take it anymore. He admitted to all the truth. The box toppled over inside his garage. It was him that lost his grip, resulting in his neighbor's death. Mike buried his face inside his hand, shaking and crying. What was going to happen to him now? Was he going to jail? The police officer seemed shocked by his reaction. One of them brought him a glass of water and the officer who had asked him the question waited for a few seconds before speaking back. Well, I'm sorry for what you're going through. However, you must know that you won't be accused of any manslaughter. It was an accident. However, there's something that might happen. Your neighbor's family might consider that you're liable for the accident and they might have the right to claim compensation. However, the judge will have the last word in all of this. Mike felt relieved to hear this. Besides, now his conscience was clean, but now there was a new worry in his life. Would his neighbor's family claim compensation? In order to protect the privacy of those depicted, some names, locations, and identifying characters have been changed and are products of the author's imagination. Any resemblance to actual events or places or persons, living or dead, are entirely coincidental. 